what is the likelihood of an event occurring? When we calculate probability, we determine how likely it is that a particular event or events will occur. While certain professions do this for a living, probability appears in many other aspects of daily life, such as weather, sports, insurance, business, or medicine. Knowing how likely an event is to occur is useful when making decisions. When we roll a regular six-sided die that is a fair die, meaning that we have an equal chance of rolling one, two, three, four, five, or six, there are six possible outcomes that we could get. That is the total number of outcomes which would go in the denominator of our probability formula. If we are calculating the probability of rolling an even number on our regular six-sided die, two, four, or six are the outcomes that satisfy this particular condition. These are what we call the favorable outcomes. So we have three numbers on our die that are even out of six numbers in total. An event is the collection of outcomes that satisfy the particular condition that we are given. When calculating probability, we're going to begin by writing it as a fraction. We can then convert that fraction into either a decimal or a percentage. The probability of rolling an even number on a regular six-sided die is three out of six. Reduce that fraction to one half. One divided by two is 0 0.5 as a decimal. Multiply that by 100, we have a 50% chance of rolling an even number. When calculating probability, we're going to often represent it as a decimal unless the question specifically specifies to write it as a percentage. As a decimal, all probabilities must fall between zero and one. A probability of zero means that it is impossible to get that particular event, such as on a regular six-sided die, the probability of rolling a seven is going to be zero. Out of the six sides that we have, zero have a seven on them, so that is an impossible event. A probability of one means that it is certain. We are guaranteed to get that particular event, such as if we were to calculate the probability of rolling a number from one to six on our regular six-sided die. Well, six numbers on that die out of six numbers contain a number one through six. There is a one or 100% chance that we are going to roll one of those six numbers. Most probabilities, such as most events in life, are going to fall somewhere between zero and one, such as if we were to calculate the probability of rolling a two on our regular six-sided die, there is one two out of the six possible outcomes. If we were to calculate the probability of rolling an odd number, one, three, five would be the odd numbers on our die. So we have three possible outcomes. Out of six, we have a one half or 50% chance of rolling an odd number. This is what we call the theoretical probability. It is mathematically what should happen if we are calculating the probability of event A, we're going to take the number of times that outcome occurs and we're going to divide it by the number of outcomes in total in our sample space if each of those outcomes has an equally likely chance of occurring. If we have a fair coin, meaning there's an equally likely chance of flipping either a head or a tail, what is the probability of getting heads if we were to toss the coin 50 times? So we can start by saying the probability of getting heads out of the 50 times that we flip, 25 of them in theory should come up as a head. One half of the time we should be flipping heads, one half of the time we would be flipping tails. That is a 50% chance or 0.5 chance of flipping a head. If we toss two coins, what is the theoretical probability of getting two heads? On coin one, we are either going to toss a head or a tail. What we toss on the second coin is independent of what we happen to toss on the first coin. So we're going to get either a head or a tail, a head or a tail. You always want to imagine two different coins. So I'm going to choose two very distinct coins, such as the Canadian penny and the Canadian quarter. You can see that the head on the penny is different than the head on the quarter. So we have one, two, three, four possible outcomes. Out of those four outcomes, these are the two heads. That is the event that we are looking for in this particular question. So it is the two heads that we want. That particular event is going to occur one time. So we have a one one in four chance of flipping two heads, 25% or 0.25 as a decimal. 
experimental probability is what does actually happen. If we were to toss a coin 50 times, we know that we're probably not going to get 25 heads. If we toss a coin 50 times, that is the total number of trials that we run in our experiment. So that's going to go in the denominator here. If we happen to get ahead 30 times, that is the number of times that particular event does occur. So 30 is going to go in the numerator. So 30 out of 50 times, our experimental probability is 60% or 0 0.6. The more trials that we run, the closer we're going to get to the theoretical probability. So if we were to keep going 100 times of flipping, 1,000 times of flipping, we're going to get closer to that 50%. But when we actually run the experiment, if we just do it a couple times, it's probably not going to come out to be 50% every time. So that's the difference between what should happen is the theoretical mathematical probability compared to what actually does happen when we run the experiment.